Now let's uh, start with uh, Exhibit A, the Born Stone, which uh, was found in the area of uh, Kumasakum Kanit near Bourne, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And uh, since its discovery, uh, this uh, cryptic inscription found uh, on a 300-pound block of granite, originally uh, called uh, the Indian Stone, uh, baffled many. Uh, and uh, interestingly, um, no one really had um, an inc inclination of what was written on this stone um, until um, Barry Fell uh, tried to interpret it as um, Viking uh, runes and Phoenician. Uh, and of course, uh, Barry Fell in his um, famous opus, um, America BC, he was uh, one of the first um, to uh, really uh, give it uh, a go at the um, Iberian script and uh, identified the language as Punic, of course, a form of Phoenician from Carthage. One uh, person uh, looked at the uh, Indian stone and uh, was a Mr. De La Barre from the Rhode Island uh, Historical Society, and he had uh, grouped this uh, along with uh, other stones that he had found, and some of them that he had described as um, a form of Indian um, picture writing and, and belonging to the uh, Wampanoags, which were an Algonquian people. And so um, Barry Fell translated the stone and the, the inscription as reading a proclamation of annexation by this Hano takes possession. He then uh, went on to remind us that Hano was a um, noted explorer from Carthage who voyaged into the Atlantic in uh, 425 BCE in the chapter entitled uh, Ships of Tarshish in his book uh, under the photo um, for the, uh, the Burnstone. Uh, he, he wrote the following, uh, the Burnstone recording uh, the, the annexation of Massachusetts to Hano, a Punic uh, Sufet king or governor who may not have been the same as the historical Carthaginian Sufet of that same name. So he, this is how he goes around the, the dating for it. Uh, and following up on um, Burn, uh, the Burnstone translation by Fell, John White uh, remarked in Ancient America, on the, Burnstone gives evidence of early Atlantic crossing, and others were uh, intent on verifying his Phoenician interpretation, and one such person was a Dr. Mark A. McManamin, a uh, geology teacher at uh, Mount uh, Holyoke uh, College, who in the uh, 1990s revised it and came with this uh, reading. A stone marker that reveals 3 plus 1 observation by Q. Wow, Q again. I wonder um, if um, Mr. McMahon uh, was able to identify this Q person, whoever he is. So Fell had identified the Iberian script expressing the Punic tongue, and why should Hanno or any other uh, proud Phoenician mariner choose to write in Punic uh, using a less uh, handy script uh, such as Iberian? Uh, That's what I wonder. And it doesn't make sense even if we are to accept that uh, Fell's explanation for having Hanno pick up maybe um, Iberian sailors in the port of Cadiz uh, and having them inscribe uh, something on a stone once they land on a foreign beach, uh, an area that they really don't know and that they think that they have discovered a faraway land. And so um, Barry Fell, nevertheless, was the first uh, ever to uh, identify the the uh, this the written language as a form of Celtic Iberian and um, and much to our surprise uh, even though they they are he identifies these as Iberian but not Punic it's funny that the language um, 
should not be Iberian in itself, uh, since why give you uh, why why go through the bother of um, uh, using such a difficult uh, script for such an easy language to write even when you're writing in Punic. And one uh, person who was you know who questioned Fells, uh, but he was a close collaborator of um, Barry Fell, and in his paper uh, on Iberian inscriptions. Uh, Donald Buchanan wrote the following. What do we have here? Is the language really Celtic or is it just a closely related Indo-European language? It is my personal feeling that the language used in the inscription uh, for the uh, Southwest I, uh, Iberian Portugal in inscription is indeed Celtic. So, um, Phil, uh, you know, most uh, evidently encouraged by the opinion of uh, contemporary scholars, was working under the impression that the Iberian script necessarily had to translate as a Punic dialect, uh, since he thought that the um, Carthaginians uh, had uh, overtaken uh, Iberia and uh, imposed their language. For, for him, uh, the Iberians, who were probably very barbaric people and very uncouth, they had to, um, you know, uh, fall under the dominion of a more um, uh, sophisticated and civilized people, such as the, uh, the Phoenicians. Uh, so, to achieve uh, his uh, Punic uh, reading, Fell dropped the vowels, which is strange in itself, too, because we know that the uh, Iberian uh, script is a, um, you know, uh, syllabary uh, and uh, it has uh, the whole the entire set of, uh, of five vowels uh, used by the Indo-European people so that doesn't make sense in itself and so for example um, most evidently e, e, which is the uh, the uh, Indo-European E uh, as in English E is um, the letter E not I, not the letter I, uh, would equal H, and W uh, would be a W sound, you know, like in the W in, in, in English or German, you know, uh, would be a V. But um, in, um, in Iberian, it's a U sound, you know, like a U, U as in uh, O-U in French or double O in English. And so this is the uh, semi- uh, semi-consonantal uh, vowel or the oo sound and uh, for this uh, he also had to interpret uh, the chip marks and, and identify them as a form of uh, a and you know like a a, um, a very short uh, ah you know uh, and um, as a schwa you know indeed uh, for his interpretation though therefore Fell had to rely on the expertise of a uh, Malcolm D. Pearson, uh, whose uh, photographic skills led to the, the decipherment of the burnstone. But then uh, Bell had to um, correct uh, some of the, the letters which uh, didn't quite match his, um, his Punic reading. And so he had to um, uh, imp improvise a bit there. And so I guess um, when you really want to expound the uh, the words you need to play around with the uh, the letters and so that's what he was doing and so that's how he got to his um, Hano uh, uh, reading but then uh, if um, you really um, so this is what I you know I looked at that and I said no that doesn't work it doesn't make any sense at all and especially um, I had a very good uh, photo, a high-resolution photo from the uh, the Bourne Historical Museum in uh, Cape Cod, uh, Massachusetts, and the some of the letters didn't match, so it didn't quite match with what uh, Fell gave in his book, and uh, so I went over it again and read it as Fell suggested, a form of Iberian, you know, using the. Iberian syllabary, the Iberian script. And so the uh, header, you know, with the three um, characters at the top, the three symbols at the top, 
uh, the first one read du, du, the second one read ki, gi, the third one read pu, bu. So this gave du, ki, bu, or tu, gi, pu, no, whatever, so what do you make of this, right? So you, you, you have to, so what I usually do is I go over it many times, I, I read it out loud, you know, Doogie, dookie, 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 boo, dookie, boo. Okay, now I get it. And then um, when you look at the um, the letters at the bottom, which are is a long, really a long line of, of, of symbols, and we know that, you know, using the um, Celtiberian script or the Iberian scripts in general, you know, you really get um, all of the... Um, because many of the symbols are, you know, um, uh, they have the consonant and the vowel mixed in with them, you know, like, uh, let's say, as I was reading uh, do too, you know, then you, ha you have uh, data and doto and dete, you know, and so with the other uh, consonants, you have the same, you know, like kege and uh, kigi and kugu and so and so on. And so when I started reading, um, the um, then uh, reading the the bottom line, it uh, really uh, came out um, uh, when I started reading it. Um, uh, sin, uh, here's here's um, the first the first um, word that pops up is um, balbe, balbe, oh balbe, what's that? Senobem. Sinobim? Wow, that's, that's starting to sound a lot like uh, Iberian Celtic, eh? Sinobim Tagioki or Takiogi? Oho, doe, doe. Balbe Sinobim Takiogi doe. Boy, that makes a lot of sense. And so when you go at it, word for word, it here's what it Here's what it gives. Balbe is the vocative of balbos, a personal name. CF, you know, the same as the Latin balbus. Aha. And what does it mean in, in, in Old Celtic? It means dumb, lame, silent. So this is a silent one, you know, like someone who, who doesn't speak unnecessarily. And then you and this and then I started looking into it. And I says, "Oh yes, the Balbus family, very famous uh, Roman family, and a famous Iberian family." And uh, now there's a story here, and Cenobum, which is uh, the dual dative locative case of Senos, the elder, like in senator, you know, the the old, the elder. You know the gracious one, so this is Balbi, the elder, okay. And then you have, which would mean, you know, uh, Balbi the elder, uh, for for Bal for Balbi the elder to him for him. Oh wow, for the both, okay. And then Takioki, uh, genitive of Takiokos. Literally, uh, the chiefly one, the chieftain, okay, someone really uh, high up in the, you know, hierarchy, in the social uh, order. And then um, you have uh, Tagioki, which from, is from Dagiokos. And here you have it too as a, a dual plural. So it means both of the leaders, you know, and it means most benevolent in Celtic, compounded from the adjective dagos, morally good, heart, uh, heartly, you know, someone who is really giving, with the super, su superlative, uh, the adjectival uh, suffix, uh, eos, iayon, with dagia, and okos, there you have it, you know, literally... Um, the very uh, most benevolent one, you know. And um, Doe, uh, 
doughy is is a, usually it's a a, a typical um, a, a typical um, abbreviation you will find in most of the uh, lapidary uh, Celtic old Celtic uh, inscriptions, uh, which is from uh, doentos. Uh, which is the nom nominative uh, singular, uh, the present participle for giving, donating, uh, from the verb uh, do to give, uh, did it, um, has given, uh, did do, he or she gave it, you know. So, as a comment to this, I would say, you know, uh, this mention seems to uh, commemorate a landing commissioned by a certain Balbus of. The two elders uh, probably refers to the house of uh, Lucius uh, Cornelius Balbus, uh, the major, and Balbus uh, Minor, uh, the younger, who is a ne nephew, the nephew of Balbus the elder, decisively. Uh, this uh, uh, really um, throws a new light on the uh, Bornstone. Um, since we're naming the, uh, the, two, uh, the, the two Balbi there, and... Um, there, it's saying that the, the stone was given and was con commemorated for the landing, you know. It's, they're not saying that they are, um, it's a land claim, you know, uh, claiming the land for the Belbus family or for the Romans or for the Iberians. It's just saying that they they are the ones who uh, who landed there, you know. Uh, the, the, these people uh, were sent by uh, Balbus um, uh, to explore, and then this is what they have found. So they have found this land which they have identified, and they're claiming it in a way uh, as um, as a landing uh, uh, party and something that they have uh, discovered, sort of like centuries and centuries before um, Christopher Columbus, uh, the this uh, Iberian family uh, has, you know, already found uh, this uh, new uh, land. So, um, a, a bit on the Balbi uh, family there. Uh, so, Balbus uh, was Latinized uh, from Balbos, uh, was the name uh, of this uh, renowned and established family uh, from uh, Cadiz in Spain, you know, in those days it was called Cadiz, Gades, uh, which at that time was a uh, Phoenician trading post uh, but then when the Romans took over it after the Punic Wars, it became um, the uh, largest city in, in uh, the Roman Empire after Rome. And so um, there was a lot happening there. And uh, Cadiz was a, a hub of uh, commercial uh, and uh, military um, uh, sea activity because um, ships were sailing from there beyond the... Uh, uh, the coast of um, um, what is now Portugal and going all the way up um, to um, the uh, cities uh, and ports in uh, on the uh, European Atlantic coast uh, uh, up uh, to the British Isles and all the way up uh, into some of the uh, colonies uh, in, in what is now uh, Germany, uh, which was uh, at that time there was a big colony uh, in Germany was called Cologne, Colonia. And so uh, there was a lot of activity going on there during the Roman Empire. And uh, so the this is what enriched uh, the Balbi family uh, in uh, Gades. And uh, they, these people, uh, you know, were involved in the activities of the Roman Empire. And uh, especially um, in North Africa, and uh, this is how they were made famous. And one of the, Balbi the Minor, he was, um, or they call him also uh, uh, Balbi II, uh, Balbus II. He was, um, uh, of course, uh, received in, in, in Rome and given all of the honors uh, after the, the war against the Garamatians and, and so, so on. So this um, uh, Balbus, uh, the, the miner, he was also um, a proprietor uh, uh, of Rome, and uh, for some time he was um, proprietor of uh, northern uh, Africa, in Libya, and then uh, in Gaul, 
while uh, in Rome, uh, he oversaw the construction of the theater uh, of Balbus, which was commemorated to the, which commemorated the return of one of his protectors, uh, Augustus Caesar. And that was when he had come back from Rome in uh, 13 BCE. It was before the birth of Christ, of course. And this explains how this uh, junior member of the um, Balbus Gentis had um, distinguished himself in the Roman Calvary and uh, inheriting uh, his uncle's uh, name, uh, Lu Lucius uh, Cor Cornelius. Uh, and uh, he minted uh, a few Gaelic uh, co coins, um, one which w was found the mention of uh, Balbus' uh, proprietor, you know. Then uh, Balbus disappears for uh, some 20 odd years. Uh, where he went, uh, no one knows. Uh, we know that uh, he went uh, around um, Africa uh, on way to Nigeria and uh, around Lixus, uh, the river. And uh, where uh, afterwards he went, uh, no one knows. Uh, maybe he went to America and this probably is what the Bornstone shows. Exhibit B, the Indian Mark Rock of Tiverton, Rhode Island. According to the Rhode Island Historical Society, the inscribed rock found on a beach in Tiverton was first reported by Reverend Ezra Stiles, who speculated that it was of a Phoenician hand and thus 3,000 years old. And this is a quote. While Edmund de la Barre saw it as an Indian picture writing, and it was later concluded by Edward J. Lenick to date from the middle to the late Woodland period, that is from about 1000 to 16 uh, CE. And others such as Fell, who followed on the Old World Punic letters and interpretation of Ezra Stiles, recognized the Rhode Island uh, uh, as uh, a Punic ins inscription in Iberian. Others uh, saw it as um, Nordic runes. And uh, so if you look at it uh, closely, um, you'll find that um, the, um, the style of the iconography bears much resemblance to uh, some of the um, very um, archaic Bronze Age um, uh, rock art uh, from southern uh, Iberia, uh, and also the um, symbols found on the uh, the stone, the markings, uh, also identify very well with the uh, Iberian. Um, um, and so, if you uh, look at it, it, it looks like a, um, a stick figure uh, laying down with an X and uh, surrounded uh, with um, images uh, or symbols that look like um, shields and spears and arrows and bows and arrows. And these read as, um, so there, it's a form of a rebus and it reads uh, in um, the Iberian script. And it reads uh, as follows. Um, the first uh, symbol is O and then it, there's a symbol uh, that is a kugu and the third symbol is a pebe, and the fourth symbol is a kugu, and then bata, and then the R symbol, which is a sort of form of a, a, a delta, which is inverted. And then the, uh, the stick man lying down um, forms a rebus. And so uh, if you read um, the symbols in this rebus, you get E, Dutu, N or S, uh, depending on um, on the way you look at it, or it could be a double S or a double L. Now, Rhode Island uh, is not too, too far from um, Massachusetts. Uh, it's uh, to the um, exactly to the west uh, or to the southwest of um, Cape Cod. So it's uh, very very close to the area where the burnstone was found, and uh, so it could be also a uh, Another indication uh, of a landing uh, or a certain party of the uh, the Iberians um, uh, in in uh, the region. So here's what um, the um, it reads. Uh, 
so the uh, o ogu um, or oku uh, beku begu uh, batar uh, it reads um, as follows um, ogu if it's the uh, the uh, declination um, dative uh, commutative of ogus uh, the youth uh, so here uh, at this place uh, is a youth. Uh, and then uh, beku bekos um, uh, again be, is from uh, is of the same um, uh, declination. Uh, so it's um, it means a small, a uh, a bee, or uh, let's say a small person or a, a, a bee. And um, then uh, begos means curved and bent. So. Um, it could uh, imply that the uh, person um, was um, uh, fell or something like that. And then batar is um, the uh, first person of the uh, indicative present of the verb uh, bato to fight, a uh, battle to battle. And so bataros uh, is the adjective. Um, uh, so uh, fighting. Uh, and uh, then you have um, in the rebus, uh, if you can. Um, Follow um, with starting with the head. The uh, the circle would read as a knee, and then there would be do two, and then n or s, and this would read um, edus or eduns or both edun or edus as a pun. So eden um, means ardor, fervor, and zeal, and edun means space area, and then uh, edus means um, is an, is a name for the morning sun. So um, uh, it could also be the deity uh, to whom um, they were praying. And so um, what it means exactly is um, here is a youth uh, who is bent and curved and um, how small is a bee in this area since it's such a large place uh, and there was a battle and fighting going on and um, hail to the morning sun. So this is a exhibit B um, of um, the uh, inscriptions, the Iberian inscriptions of following uh, the burnstone um, that we have here. Exhibit C, the Abercorn petroglyphs of Quebec. Petroglyph um, was um, first uh, brought to my attention by Gérard Le Duc uh, from uh, Parton, and um, Gérard uh, spent a lot of his time um, uh, after his uh, retirement from university, from Concordia University in Montreal, um, going around the countryside in uh, and around Lake Memphri Magog near the Vermont border, uh, looking at the um, Native American uh, petroglyphs. Uh, and he noticed that many of them um, look more like European uh, petroglyphs than American petroglyphs. And so this uh, petroglyph, the Abercorn uh, petroglyph, is from um, a small town uh, in Sutton, Sutton County uh, and um, by the Mississippi Bay of Lake Champlain. And it uh, gives access to the navigable uh, Hudson River. So it might be that um, uh, those uh, the, these um, petroglyphs are written in Celtiberian, I gather, and they put, could probably be the um, uh, the testament of um, uh, Iberians who um, uh, went around the coast and uh, went up uh, the uh, Hudson River, or probably uh, went uh, up uh, the um, uh, St. Lawrence River uh, and then uh, took the Yamaska River down to um, where uh, Abercorn is. But I would be inclined to think that they went up uh, the Hudson River, uh, actually. And uh, so the area was uh, settled in um, 1792 by uh, the Loyalists and uh, a certain uh, Thomas uh, Spencer uh, founded uh, this um, as an extension of um, New Hampshire, and um, so it was brought to uh, to 
the attention of many um, uh, for a long time, you know, uh, many people uh, knew about this. Uh, it sort of had a, a fame around the area. So um, here, um, here is what... Um, I live here in Potton Township, which is a territory designed by the British after the uh, American Revolution. When I first came here, I told people I was interested in archaeology. And they said, oh, well, we have what we, uh, the Indian rock of Poppin. And I said, well, I'm interested. So I went to see <clears throat> and took pictures. And uh, a lot of people have been looking at it before me, some people from the United States. <clears throat> and uh, after a while, comparing ancient script from manuscripts and comparing to the uh, engraved markings on the so-called Indian rock, I realized it was not Indian. And besides, there was an archaeologist from the Quebec government uh, wrote a report, which I have a copy. He said, it's not, it's not Amerindian. It's, it's some kind of Euro-American. That is, it's in America, but from European origin. So, um, here, um, here is what um, is written in the uh, Reflet du Lac uh, website uh, under the title of Petroglyph et Petroglyph Phoenician at Abercorn, Phoenician petroglyphs and uh, pictographs in Abercorn. And so this is uh, what uh, Gérard uh, Le Duc uh, wrote. Um, Many years ago, I was invited to have a look at two uh, pictographs on a shale stone outcrop in the municipality of Abercorn, a small village near the town of Sutton in the eastern townships, and not too far from the Vermont, Vermont border. After having cleaned the stone covered in branches and dead leaves, I recognized large-scale human forms engraved with petroglyphs, writings etched in stone. I then white chalked over the marks in order to make them more visible and I took pictures. Once at home, I, I project the photos on a large sheet of white paper for tracing and one of the shapes shows what seems to be a pregnant woman, accompanied with bilingual writings. Indeed, in the upper part, we can notice the petroglyphs of the Phoenician alphabet, while the marks engraved in, on a vertical line further down are Celtic Ogam. Not going for a complete interpretation, I translated certain words such as Baal, the god of the Celts and the Phoenicians, winter and the proper noun uh, Hugyu. And the second drawing shows a, a naked woman with a, the explicit pubic symbol over her head. The presence of both alphabets side by side can be explained by the fact that the Phoenician and the Celts befriended in Europe. The first uh, went to the Cornish Islands and the English Channel to exploit the tin mines for bronze metallurgy. They were in Celtic land. The association of these two cultures suggests that this happened during the Bronze Age, which was thousands of years before Jesus Christ. What were these people doing in Abercorn, an old Malachite and or turquoise mine found in the area could have had some commercial interest, as it was the case in ancient Europe. This raw ore is a copper carbonate which colors its crystals with a pretty green hue. How should we interpret these two depictions? I postulate that the site located by a stream was one for fertility ritual for the peopling of a colony. Fertility plays an important part. This place has been known for a long time and the local oral law insists on marking the, ra the rape of uh, this white woman by a Native American. It was customary to blame Amerindians and Africans for such things. The belief in the discovery of America by Christopher Columbus in 1492 holds like a dogma of the Christian faith, and this despite 
the many discoveries and writings that indicate that our continents were known well before 1492. For, for political and religious reasons on both sides of the Atlantic, the status quo remains. My proposals for an ancient Celtic presence here were often put in doubt. The pictographs illustrated in this communique very well show that the Celts were here established with the Phoenicians. It is important to recognize that those who carved these drawings were not wanderers since they were expecting progeny. Therefore, they had to nourish themselves off the cleared and cultivated fields as well as clothe and lodge themselves. They lived with the natives, these pioneers of the region. So then we have the um, first panel, the one showing depicting a, a woman, which really seems to be an archer. And um, the uh, this naked woman um, uh, seems to be holding an arrow between her legs uh, and a nut-shaped vulva could be the moon and the woman, a representation um, of a Sagittarian figure uh, with the arrow showing uh, the ecliptic. Uh, and it could be, um, let's say, a representation of the, uh, maybe uh, the Iberian Diana, you know. As for myself, I, I'm, you know, I'm not really um, convinced that uh, these are um, Phoenician uh, symbols, uh, as Dr. Leduc um, mentions. I would really be inclined to think that they, um, they would, uh, along with the Oum, uh, represent um, a Celtic form of writing. And, and I tried to uh, translate them and uh, using uh, the Phoenician, and it didn't work out well. So I said to myself, well, why waste the time? Let's go for the, um, the Celtiberian uh, script. And it fit like a glove, of course. So here is... Um, the transliteration uh, that uh, can be um, uh, obtained uh, with uh, the um, the first the oem. Let's go for the oems, and so um, so first with the oems, um, we have uh, bimu amobi. Bimu uh, means uh, with by the means of coming strong. The commutative instrumental case of the adjective bimos bima biman. Uh, going, coming strong, going forth. Amobi, of uh, the mercenary one, uh, from Amos, uh, hireling, mercenary, plus the genitive of the character qualifier for the formation of uh, agent names like Obus. This would be uh, a title uh, for a personal name uh, or a personal name. So this would be uh, Bimu Amobi, would be coming forth of Amobos, the mercenary. So that means that. Um, uh, Amobos um, led um, a uh, party uh, into the uh, the area, uh, maybe because there was a peak not far, or a, a navigable river, and if they were, uh, let's say, um, uh, assisted by Native Americans, uh, scouts that they had met uh, in the Hudson um, uh, Delta a river uh, near uh, New York today, the present New York, they would have probably been able to uh, go up uh, the river with scouts on canoe and uh, let's say uh, find uh, this area uh, in uh, the lake. And they were probably looking for an in inward. The lake uh, at this area, Mississippi would be, um, Champlain would be the best place uh, to, uh, to further north to land. So um, then the, um, you have, um, the uh, Celtiberian script, um, and what does the Celtiberian script say? Uh, it's not very different. Uh, it's in this exactly the same um, form of language, uh, in in the same language, the same let's say um, uh, time period uh, as the Oum. So uh, what does it read? It reads Baesoba uh, Batamis. Baesoba means the, the Boorish woman. By Sobos, the Boorish, you know. And um, Batam means may I fight, to fight, to combat. Verbal suffix uh, for the first person of the imperative, subjunctive, optative. May I, if I may, fight. Therefore, es, eds, esic, esi, 
there see also uh, x uh, prefix out of from x c x c stony river and if uh, absolutely this um, the river that this uh, this uh, petroglyph was found nearby is a, a, a stony river and um, it fits the description very well so what does it say it, it says that they um they were fighting a, a chief uh, a woman chief and so I gather that um, for the uh, the Celtiberians or the Celts in general, uh, the Native Americans, and this I find, you know, with, with um, some of the place names uh, for the um, Hesperides, uh, the um, the Isles of the Blessed, uh, um, that the uh, the Celts knew, and one of the names was um, the land of women, you know, Tirlambang, um, uh, and so um, the land of women would have been, um, let's say, uh, the coasts of North America. Since the Native Americans were beardless and had long hair, they would have um, all seemed to be dressed up like women uh, or Amazons uh, for the, um, the Celts who were heavily bearded, as we know. And so this probably explains it here. And then um, you have the idea also that uh, the uh, Diana was the... Uh, you know, the Roman uh, goddess uh, uh, of the forest. Uh, and so uh, it would be fitting that this a allegorical figure would be, would represent uh, this, the, this people. And uh, of course the Celts had uh, many names for uh, the Diana, the goddess, uh, you know, uh, Magosia and whatnot, uh, Marha. And uh, there are many others, uh, Nanto Suelta and whatnot. Okay, so now um, you have here um, a detailed study of the head uh, with the um, uh, the uh, inscription. And a funny thing, you know, here that I have is um, it says um, libaka, libaka kete. If, now libaka, we we we've seen that before, and in, uh, in in Iberia, and I'll show you later. Um, uh, in another exhibit, um, one of the plates uh, with uh, the name uh, Friendship to um, the Libicoi. And so here you have li li the Liba, uh, Liwa, is a stony mountain, you know. Um, and um, so this is a, it qualifies a positional uh, suffix, uh, Libaka, uh, as um, the place of uh, stony mountains. And, and, and truly enough, the area has uh, many mountainous, uh, Mount Sutton and whatnot, who are uh, very, uh, very steep and very uh, rocky. And so uh, then you have Aba, Awa for water, uh, for river, like uh, Abon, a uh, river, Avon uh, in Welsh. So this uh, is the vocative of Ketos, uh, which means a wood, a copse, a forest. And I'm um, punning with the, uh, the adjective uh, Geti, um, or ghettos, getta, getton, which means a uh, big bottom, and they, they showed the um, this uh, character. Which this one is a man uh, on the, the other side of the stone, and um, he has um, the head of a man, a, a shaved head, and uh, the body uh, the body of a pregnant woman, but more of a bear. So here you have a head of a European with a very um, aqua, aqu aquiline nose and um, the body of a bear. So again, the Iberian bear, okay? So this uh, gives us a good idea of who these people are. So this here representation here shows that the Iberians went to this area near Mount Sutton. And then you have uh, the inscription. This is where it gets really interesting and it's in really beautiful um, uh, Iberian script. And it reads uh, Mba, Maba, uh, Mbar, Bai, Ogaba, Baba, which uh, Mba, Amba means both around. So both areas or both uh, mountains, both peaks or both waterways. It, and it's also a uh, astronomical observation for the, the overlapping dates for the moon. So. This could indicate that they were there on uh, a specific at a specific time, and we know that um, you know during uh, 
the summer, uh, the moon is it's it's on its high course. So, um, barbai, um, barbai, from to the riverine, ambarios, ambarios, waterside dwellers, the riverine people, and uh, then you have um, ogaba, ogabos, ogaba, ogabos, ogaban, a circular egg shaped in the form of an egg, and so this would be this area of the Mississippi uh, uh, Lake, which uh, ends in, in in the shape of, a, of an egg because there are islands before it, you know, you have the, these islands that could also be taken to be in the form of uh, lakes, uh, for uh, eggs in the lake. And then you have uh, Bimu Amobi, uh, which I have mentioned in uh, Oam. So um, if you start reading uh, from the bottom of the stone, uh, from the left to the right, as it is uh, customary for Oam, then uh, the entire um, let's say the entire script would read coming forth of Amobos, the mercenary, the moon is observed overlapping. She dies where at the mountain water and woods by Soba, Ursula Major, may I fight there. So it's invoking um, Dea Artio um, or Dea Arduina, who, that also means the goddess of, of high places, of, of, of mountainous areas. Uh, for this uh, battle uh, devoted to Mercury, Artaios, and um, Andrast Andrasta is the um, Romano-British -Briti uh, name for um, the, um, the, the bear uh, goddess. And this uh, sums up um, the uh, reading for the Arbercorn uh, petroglyphs of uh, southern Quebec. Exhibit D, the Grave Creek Stone. As with other uh, curiosities of the kind that were um, uh, found in the uh, 19th uh, or and 20th century, uh, uh, many of the uh, people, the local folks, believed that it was um, some form of Indian writing, and some others uh, tried to identify the, the alphabet, and uh, some believed that it was uh, Hebrew, Phoenician, probably Greek, something uh, of that uh, kind. But um, it was only until um, Barry Feld had a look at it and uh, in, in 1976, and this is what he wrote in his book, America BC, on page uh, 159. The, the first authenticated find of an engraved Phoenician tablet in an American archaeological context was that of a Tartessian inscription found in 1838. This uh, tablet uh, was excavated from a burial chamber found at the base of Mammoth Mound in Moundsville, West Virginia. Although the uh, Tartessian alphabet had not then been deciphered, the similarity of the inscription to Iberian writing was recognized, and in the contemporary reports of the dig, uh, the mound and its contacts were attributed to European visitors. Man-made burial mounds or tumuli are characteristic of many of the uh, rural graves of European Bronze Age. And so he says the notion that Europeans had visited and even settled in North America in ancient times continued as an acceptable hypothesis in the archaeological periodicals for the ensuing 40 years. Then sometime around 1870, uh, the opinion became widespread that there had been uh, no such callers before Columbus. And so the Moundsville tablet was forgotten or dismissed uh, as a later intrusion that had accidentally fallen into the mound or been surreptitiously uh, introduced by some irresponsible person. Uh, others thought it was a Cherokee artifact of quite modern date. Uh, unconnected uh, with the uh, so-called mound builders, uh, a word coined for the supposed phase of woodland Indian culture on the East Coast. Uh, and so further on, on the next page in the caption of the photo of Mammoth Mount, the Mammoth Mount tablet, uh, 
uh, Fell writes the following. Uh, he was found in a stream bed in central West Virginia and erroneously su supposed to be of Viking origin. And its vocabulary is found in standard Semitic dictionaries and yields the following translation, the script matching that giving of Derringer's um, tablet. So this is uh, Fell's reading of it. The Memorial of Thet, this title, his brother, caused to be made. Tet to be taken as a letter of the Hebraic and Punic alphabets, or as a mythonym, maybe. And what should we make of this reading? So you, uh, McCulloch, uh, who was a member of the Midwestern Epigraphic Society at the time, wrote, Thank you um, for your read on uh, Grave Creek. There may be uh, not much uh, to it, but it's the first uh, coherent old world-like inscription found in a North American uh, context. You say the alphabet is Iberic, widely accepted candidate, but what do you think uh, th of the language? Uh, what is the language? Does anyone really know what sort of language the ancient Iberic uh, writers uh, uh, spoke? Well, uh, of course, uh, it, maybe um, it, at the time uh, you was uh, writing this, uh, this was uh, sometime uh, around uh, 2000, um, maybe uh, 2010, 2009. Maybe in those days, um, uh, people went along with uh, Fell uh, thinking that it was Punic. Others uh, thought that it was uh, Iberian, uh, a language connected to uh, Basque. And so, and, uh, so they assumed that it had to do with uh, something else. And, maybe uh, something uh, akin to Basque uh, or Punic, and this is what uh, Fell and many others thought, which is absolutely not the case. And so here's the, the translation uh, that I had for, for uh, this stone. Uh, it, when you um, transliterate um, the text, uh, uh, it reads uh, as following, A tati talanta datim beos beor, and bada duco. And so, what does this mean? Atati talanta datim beos becor ambeda duco, ambada duco. It reads, O Father, in this place, talantos, the lofty one, a mound, alive, I strike the non pit or the, the non rope or the, the non-fettered guide, Duco's the guide. So this is what uh, it reads in Celtiberian. So it's, it commemorates a certain Talantos uh, who was uh, buried in this mound. Uh, and um, I'll give you the uh, transliteration and the uh, translation is a complete etymolo etymological uh, rundown of it. So. Um, what is my purport for this? Uh, the comment I would make is, uh, if correct, uh, this translates as a, uh, an eulogy uh, to be uttered uh, during a funeral rite, uh, commemorating a certain uh, Ducos Talantos uh, buried in uh, the burial chamber of the grave mound. And uh, the inscription was most likely uh, deposed with the deceased uh, or maybe um, close by, thus serving as a message uh, for the afterlife. And one can only speculate on the number of Iberian visitors uh, who were there uh, at the time. Uh, uh, we have to uh, realize that um, uh, the local population uh, of the, uh, the, the Moundsville uh, site uh, were, um, uh, contrary to what Fell believes, is uh, uh, woodland uh, uh, culture type people. And uh, so, um, the obvious play on, on words involving uh, a pitiless grave, uh, and beda, uh, and an unfettered chief, uh, and, and beda ducos, is here uh, very revealing uh, on the situation of these uh, poor visitors. And considering uh, the horizontal cross line ending with a floral design in the context of Celtiberian culture, this would represent a royal scepter. The name for a scepter in Old Celtic uh, was a segton, and the floral emblem was a scota. And this was uh, the term used for 
uh, you know, the fleur de lis type uh, symbol or uh, any floral symbol uh, that would have been used in heraldry uh, or for um, uh, for dynastic uh, families. And the name uh, Scota also symbolized uh, the Milesian uh, Goidelic dynasty of Spain, who eventually uh, resettled in Ireland. So they were probably they probably stumbled on on America here, on way to Ireland. Uh, maybe uh, there in the Irish text there are mentions that many of the ships of the Milesians didn't reach Ireland um, for the invasion. So in the book of invasions, the uh, uh, Gebala Erin, you know, the book of invasions of Ireland. And so this the the, the Milesian uh, queen was called Scota. And she was uh, the wife of the famous uh, Mil Espain uh, or Mil uh, Hispanic uh, of Ir Irish lore. And so uh, there are many uh, ligatures in the text and this is very typical of um, uh, usually the uh, the old world uh, ancient uh, inscriptions. So this is pretty much what we have on the uh, Grave Creek uh, stone. Exhibit E, the uh, Canary Iberian inscriptions. When uh, King Juba II of uh, Mauritania, a fine Roman and educated intellectual, visited the Canary Islands, he found the islands inhabited with buildings in ruins. And here is what uh, Pliny wrote in the Natural History, uh, chapter 37, uh, section 32, on the uh, Fortunate Islands. Relative to the Fortunate Islands, Juba has ascertained the following facts, that they are situated to the south in nearly a due westerly direction and at a distance from the Purple Islands of 625 miles, the sailing being made for 250 miles due west and then 375 toward the east. He states that the first is called Umbrios and that it presents no traces of buildings whatsoever, that among the mountains there is a lake and some trees which bear a strong resemblance to a giant fennel and from which water is extracted that draw from those that are black is a bitter taste but that produced by the white ones is agreeable and good for drinking. He also states uh, that also a second island has the name of Junonia, but that it contains nothing beyond a small temple of stone, also that it is in the vicinity there of another but smaller island of the same name, and then another called Capraria, which is infested with a multitude of large lizards. And according to the same author, in sight of these islands is Ningguaria, which has received the name from its perpetual snows. The island abounds also with fogs. The one next to it is Canaria, and it contains a vast number of dogs of a very large size, two of which were brought home to Juba there are some traces of buildings there to be seen. And Pliny uh, makes it clear that Cadiz, then Gades, was the hub of important maritime activity, and there mentions uh, a Hano visit there at the time of Carthage, when Carthage flourished, and that Pliny does not mention in this section, what well, he does not mention in this section are the uh, and, and what Pliny does not mention in this section are the enigmatic inscriptions found on the islands. However, he does mention the discovery by Hanno of marks concerning Iberian sailors when sailing past Gibraltar in another passage. He says, um, in another side of Gades, from the same west, a great part of the South Gulf, round about Mauritania, is at this day sailed. And indeed, the greater part of it, as well as the east, also the victories of Alexander the Great encompassed on every side, as far as the Arabian Gulf, wherein Gaius Caesar, the son of Augustus, warred in those parts. The marks are reported to have been seen remaining from Spaniard shipwrecks. And indeed, it is little known by many, 
save a minority of epigraphers and rock art experts of the Iberian inscriptions in the Canary Islands. So here are some that sparked my attention. This, uh, this uh, example of a Iberian Canarian rock reads as follows, Katibam or Gadibam, Taka Tiosi or Taga Tiosi, Gada, Gadibam, those peoples of Gadais, and then um, Taka Tiosi of the chiefly agents or the chiefly ones. And so the Hispanic peoples of uh, Cadiz did leave marks uh, on uh, Gran Canaria, as Pliny does mention. And um, so we have also um, discovered that um, uh, in America there was a mention of um, the uh, Balbis uh, uh, as um, the burnstone. And so um, what do we know of this um, Balbus minor? Of course, uh, he is a contemporary of Juba II, so these two must have met somewhere uh, at some time uh, since they were um, uh, also uh, um, under the protection of the uh, Caesars. And now, um, what it was, uh, Gades or Cadiz, uh, it was uh, the main port of the, uh, as what the Greeks called Tartessos, uh, which was actually the um, Cuneti uh, tribe, uh, Celtic tribes, or the uh, Tordetani tribes. And so uh, the Tartessian culture was uh, initiated at the start of the first millennium, circa around 12,000 to 11,000 BC. And it was at its peak from around 800 to 550 BCE. And archaeologists generally divide uh, the Tartessian culture into two uh, major periods, uh, geometric and oriental. So this uh, geometric uh, period covers uh, the period of the end of the uh, Bronze Age from around 12,000 BCE into the Iron Age from around 750 BCE. And the, the 12 uh, uh, BCE date coincides with the eruption of um, the Sea Peoples in uh, up on, into Egypt and Canaan, as you know. And uh, as for the Oriental period, it spans from about the, 750 to uh, 550 BCE and is marked by the Eastern Mediterranean influence due to um, the uh, Phoenicians and the Greek uh, presence. But uh, also could be, it, it could also be uh, postulated that a majority of the uh, peoples um, uh, in these uh, uh, Phoenician ports uh, con uh, did uh, uh, were, were comprised of uh, Philistines and Greeks. And so uh, the uh, Greek name uh, Tartessos uh, was coined from the Iberian place named Turta, uh, which means um, to to turn, to swirl. Uh, and the port there was a, a circular um, uh, port, and there was an, an opidum, uh, a big uh, mound, and this was uh, at the center of um, many canals that um, uh, were uh, surrounding uh, this uh, great city, um, which was described uh, by Strabo and uh, Pliny and many others. So it, it can be uh, postulated that the um, the Iberians did reach America either uh, being blown off the coast of Ireland or Britain or uh, gaining uh, the Canary Islands and making it to um, um, the uh, Caribbean, uh, probably going up the Mississippi River and then up the Ohio River where many of the, um, the inscriptions were found uh, in the context of the uh, hope well Adena cultures.